And one thing, when I had him as a little baby, one of those dreams for me as a parent was always, I want to write a song for my son. A single black father, I wanted to make sure that I'm depicting us in a way that isn't popular. And that's in a positive light. Hey, this is Chaz, and welcome to my world from my living room. Today, I wanna share something really special to me, and that's my love song to my son. I wanna share how I got started in songwriting and how it's become the most beautiful language I've ever learned. Stick around at the end of this podcast for a little bonus content. So, sit back, relax, and welcome to my world from my living room. Hey, it's Chaz, and welcome to my living room. So today I wanted to talk about something that's uh, really special to me, and that's my son and my relationship with my son. I mean, he was the center of my world when he was born. It was like, man, I'm a dad. What a responsibility. What do I do? What do I teach him? How do I not mess up? How do I be a great example? All these different things came into my life. Now, all the while, I'm pursuing my dreams as a photographer, as a singer, all these different things that New York had to offer. I wanted to be a part of it, but I also wanted to leave a legacy for my son in the midst of all this. So the juggling act between my creativity and my fatherhood really crossed on so many different levels. There was a time that I remember um, his first job you know, as a little model, as a Pampers baby. Like, that was amazing for me. Because every parent in the world wants their kid to be a Pampers baby. And I was fortunate in the midst of chasing my dream, being able to help nurture his and help to begin a journey for him that at the time he didn't know that of what's going on. But, you know, when I'm able to be in a position to help facilitate some of those dreams, it's a beautiful thing. There was another time when we had an opportunity to be the father and son, cast it as father and son for a Cadillac commercial that actually premiered during the Oscars one year. This was years ago. But this was amazing because as a parent, you always want the best for your kid, but when you're actually able to be a part of some of those moments and some of those beats in their life, it's a beautiful thing. And to be able to capture some of those moments professionally and personally, really, really meant a lot to me. And it does for him even now when he looks back on it. That commercial was amazing. And there was another moment within my journey as a singer-songwriter, I was able to write a song. And one thing, when I had him as a little baby, one of those dreams for me as a parent was always, I wanna write a song for my son. I want to be able to express to him how much I love him and things that he didn't know that I was thinking when he was a little baby that I can then share or he can listen to the song as he's growing up and it takes on different meaning with each passing year. That was my hope and dream and one of my biggest things that I wanted to accomplish as a singer-songwriter and as well as a dad. So that moment happened. And when it did, I was at that crossroads of how do I merge this? How do I marry my parenting with my career and my creativity? And so I wrote this song. The song is called For You. I'm sure there'll probably be a link somewhere that I'll add at some point. But the song is called For You. Once again, that juggling act happens because I'm sitting there going, okay, this song I want every dad in the world to hear this song. I have so much hopes and ambitions for this. I don't know many dads that are writing for their, son, writing for their sons or daughters, and I wanna be that dad, and I want every dad to listen to this and cry and find meaning in their fatherhood and all this sort of stuff, and I wrote this song, I was passionate about it, and you know, after I wrote it, after I got it mixed down and I had all these different things uh, to make it perfect in my eyes, I was like, I wrote this for my son. I'm like, well, I can't stop there because now I want to do a music video. And as a content creator, having all the gear and equipment that I need to 
help facilitate that part of things, right in the heart of the, the pandemic, it hit my soul that this is a time that I could really, really lean into this song and really make it great. So with one camera, I was able to create this music video of things that I was able to, you know, show him in the video doing different things and also digging back in the archives of my, my iPhone and other content that, you know, I have of him throughout his whole life and be able to call that to memory and be able to implement that into the music video. It wasn't a huge production, but it was very personal. You know, we got to sit on the couch and play and laugh and, and really kind of be father and son and have some of that imagery in the video. So now I'm waiting to put this out to the world. Okay, this is gonna be amazing. I'm, I'm gonna put it out like a couple of weeks before Father's Day. I'm gonna make sure that everything is set up. I'm gonna make sure I go to YouTube. I'm gonna put it on my Instagram Reels. I'm gonna put it on my everywhere. I'm gonna put it on Facebook, put it on all these different places. I had this grandiose release and I'm like, hey, just so you know, I wrote this song for my son and I'm really passionate about it and really kind of reaching out with a sincere heart and really wanting to reach fathers. And at the time, you know, and even now, I really champion the black father plight in America because it's very skewed. And as a single black father, I wanted to make sure that I'm depicting us in a way that isn't popular. And that's in a positive light. Because all my life, even in my own personal situation, I grew up with a single mother. My dad was never around. So for me, I lived that. So there was no way in hell I was gonna duplicate that with my own son. So I had this whole you know, thing, I'm like, I'm gonna release it, so I released it. And literally, I'm sitting there counting the likes, counting the views, I'm going through this whole process. And, you know, for my expectations for it, which I think we always have these huge expectations for our work, it didn't really show up in a way that I really wanted it to. And so I'm frustrated. I'm like, man, this song means so much. And every dad in the world could benefit from this and they're gonna share it and it's gonna go viral. And I'm gonna be on, you know, whatever talk show or I'm gonna be on someone's podcast and I'm gonna do this and da da da. And at the end of the day, I just went, no, that's not the message. The message was to simply write a song for your son. All the rest of it is a bonus. I said, whether anybody's inspired by it or you get just a little bit of engagement or anything like that, that's not the biggest thing that's supposed to happen with the song. Because at the end of the day, the song was meant to inspire and be a legacy for your son. <sighs> yeah. So when that message hit me louder than the other stuff, now granted, the song went on to have thousands and thousands of, of likes and en engagement and stuff, but for the energy I put into it, I didn't feel it was coming out the way that I wanted it to. But the message was heard even if it was just one person, that person saw value and saw my heart in that video. And the biggest part of that song, that it's now still in the infancy stage of it actually having the most impact. And that's when Gio gets older and he can listen to it as a teenager, as an adult, when he has a child. So now the value and the legacy of that song has a whole new meaning. Juggling creativity and parenting. I hope you enjoyed this one. I know it was a very introspective um, story, but if you are a parent, and whether you're a singer songwriter or no matter what you do, invest that time. And think of those moments when they're being kids. They're just being kids. And we're in our adult mind. We've got bills to pay. We've got this to do. We got that to do. Just know that everything you say when they're younger permeates in their soul. And it shows up in the most random ways when they get older. 
and they turn into adults. So one thing that if I can impart anything is to mind your words. They're powerful. Have a wonderful day.